Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jennifer Heinrich, and I am on the sales team here at Boyer & Associates. We are so glad that you could join us for our Boyer's Spring Client Events. If you've already been on a session or two, welcome back. This session will cover Microsoft AppSource, our favorite apps. If this is your first time joining us or you want a reminder, here's a quick look at this week's agenda. If you missed a session, you can request a recording by emailing kerickson at boyerassos.com. Also, just a quick reminder, you can put any questions that you might have in the Q&A box, not the chat. So just make sure you put those questions in the Q&A box. We will answer a few at the end of the session if we have time, or we'll follow up with you after the event. You can also watch your sessions if you missed them, or again, if you want, from the same event registration page. You are all clients, so we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about Boyer, but we did want to give you a quick look at what we offer. We are a full service ERP, CRM, and Power Platform Solutions provider, and we do a lot of the work in nonprofit sector specifically. I also wanted to highlight at the bottom corner here, uh, our managed support. We have revamped the way we do support here at Boyer. It's pretty exciting. We have tiered services and support options for every need from basic to support to proactive weekly meetings. If you want more info, please be sure to attend those sessions or you can email Dave at dkuntz at boyerassos.com. All right, so we have a lot of great info to cover. Let's dive into this session with Kendra. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Kendra. Hi, that's me waving at you on the screen, maybe. Anyway, um, I'm so happy you've joined us today. I hope everyone's been enjoying all the sessions. So let's talk about Microsoft App Source. So what is Microsoft App Source? Well, it's kind of like your phone. It has an app store. Well, Microsoft has an app store. Uh, this app source is an online store uh, with thousands of business applications, particularly I want to emphasize business. Uh, business applications and services built on industry leading software and providers. You can use app source to find, try, buy, deploy business software and services that help you run your business. At Boyer, we use a number of apps with our clients, and uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, we're going to jump into the app source uh, site here in just a moment, um, but I also want to show you um, some of my very favorite and Boyer's favorite apps. Uh, so really, um, Microsoft App Source has apps for really about any Microsoft product, whether it's Microsoft Outlook, Excel, SharePoint Teams, uh, but then also our personal favorites is Dynamics 365, BC, and CE, and the Power Platform. Um, there's probably an app somewhere for it. Um, and these apps are mostly what we call like bolt-on or extending the platform types of apps. So if you're using Dynamics 365 Sales or Dynamics 365 Business Central, you uh, and you're using an app from App Source, you're most likely extending uh, something like Sales or BC with additional functionality. Dynamics and Power Platform, along with Microsoft 365, have core functionality. But as we all know, we want to customize. We don't like everything just out of the box and a vanilla flavor. We want to do something more fun with it. So you can uh, get these add-ons to applications based on your industry, how you go to market, or your business challenges. So this is what AppSource is about. It's about extending your platform. So let's hop into Microsoft AppSource and let's take a look around. So I am right here on the AppSource web page and uh, Right away, we have some nice colorful things here. We also have uh, some little chiclets here that we can start clicking on to start filtering and looking at things. You'll start to see apps appear down there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this button, see all apps. I'm gonna jump right over here where I can get to some filters because when you see thousands of apps, it gets kind of overwhelming. So uh, I can find apps by product. So am I looking for a Dynamics app, a Microsoft or a Power Platform app? Well, because we're talking about Dynamics a lot, you, you can uh, exp expand that and we see Dynamics 365 apps. So if I was looking for something for marketing, let's say, I click on marketing and it filters these apps down to marketing types of apps. Um, if I'm looking by um, 
Power Platform, maybe I'm looking for some Power BI visuals. So then here I can find Power BI visuals. Uh, if I am looking by industry, maybe I'm a nonprofit. So I can scroll down here and click on nonprofit and it shows me nonprofit apps. And you'll see here we have fundraising and engagement. And uh, we'll, I will jump in later uh, and tell you about a bunch of different apps. Um, so I just wanted to show you just basically here is the site and here's how we kind of get, get around and navigate around and look at things. So once you kind of get down in the weeds, you might want to just clear all those filters and come back up to the top here and where you see all the apps uh, there. You also have a search box up here. It defaults here to apps. And from up here, I can search for something in particular. I might be looking for uh, texting, let's say. I might be looking for a texting app. And when I type in texting and search, you'll see here is a whole bunch of texting apps. And you're like, you know, there was someone that was telling me about something about texting, but this doesn't look like what they were telling me. So you might say, okay, well, maybe I'm looking for SMS. And so I can look at SMS and you're like, you know, I think it was that Twilio app. That's what they were talking about. They're talking about Twilio. And you can take a look at that app there. Um, and then you might say, well, I also heard Kendra, she was just carrying on about this app called Document Core Pack. Document Core Pack, you're like, yeah, that's what it was. So you click it, you open it. And then what you can see here also is it tells you, it just shows you with little icons. If you're out there, uh, actually, let me go back there. Um, if uh, there we go. So you can see the little apps on there, the little app symbols on there that tell you what it's for. When you hover on it, it tells you like where it can be used within the Microsoft universe. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click on that again. And what you get inside of here, it gives you an overview about the app, what all is, what it's all about, because you might sometimes the titles don't like, what does this mean? Uh, and you get details, what it does, what it you know, it's meant to do, give you some little videos or snapshots, you know, their own marketing from that particular app provider. And also they'll uh, sometimes offer uh, other apps from that provider that they are from that developer that they have offered. Now, also within this, you, uh, one thing you want to kind of pay attention to, because we all know that not every app is as great as we'd like it to be. So you'll see little things on here, these little icons on here. It means it's a Microsoft preferred solution. So it's something that you can trust. You can trust using this application. You'll also see it with, uh, let me go back to, whoops, oops, 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 oops. I don't even know how to navigate myself here. So I'll go here and I'll go to products. I'm gonna go down here to these, oops. Power BI, let's go some PR, Power BI, uh, let's get some visuals in there too. You'll see not only that preferred one, but you also see on the Power BI one, it's Power BI certified. So again, you know that it's probably pretty good. So also pay attention to, you know, the stars, it's got good ratings. That way, you know, you're not getting something that, you know, you're not gonna trust, is gonna mess up your system or anything like that. So that's the app source, takes a moment to, uh, you know, crash around in there, take a look at some things. But I also want to mention one other thing. There's also where you can find consulting services. And uh, I'm gonna look at my consulting services here. And these are just all different types of consulting services that are in here. But I wanna show you a very special one here, Boyer. And of course, you know, I have to talk about Boyer because you know, I love Boyer. And right here, you can see all of Boyer's services that they have here. And uh, particularly, I wanna outline right here, this Foundation Plus program. Uh, so that's where you can see it right here. We're right here in the App Source uh, site. So give it a click if you wanna check out our Foundation Plus program. And please feel free to reach out if you wanna talk about that with us. All right, so that's the App Source site. Let's actually talk about some apps. So I already talked about, you know, talking about some trust issues that I might have. Well, I got some little icons on there that helped me through that. So different apps that I'd like to kind of uh, draw attention to. The App Store store isn't just um, you know, other people's applications. Microsoft has their own apps in the App Store. So within Dynamics 365 CE, which uh, is short for sales, marketing, field service, customer service, uh, there's an app called Fundraising and Engagement. You may have heard uh, Lee or others talk about that. 
Um, it's an add-on to, di to, to uh, Microsoft, or sorry, Dynamics 365 Sales. Um, and what that does is it allows you to extend sales for um, fundraising and engagement. So um, this app is part of Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit. If you were in the last session with Lee, you heard about this. And it has functionality for fundraising, like managing your donors, supporters, and volunteers. You're able to manage donations, commitments, memberships, fundraising events, and so on. Uh, secondly, we have Customer Voice. This is also a Microsoft application that allows you to enhance uh, sales and marketing. Uh, it allows you to create and send surveys to your customers from within the, micro, the Dynamics 365 CE platform. So in marketing, this can be integrated into your customer journey to send a survey to your customer at just the right time, or you can also use it to send it to your contact, lead, or case. You don't have to leave Dynamics to go to another application to send out and receive back survey information. Customer Voice will allow you to pull data from Dynamics platform into the survey, and when the survey is returned back, the data is absorbed back into Dynamics as part of your customer experience. Uh, you may have heard uh, Lee and others talk about LinkedIn Navigator. Uh, we have LinkedIn Navigator and also LinkedIn Sales Insights can be integrated into your dynamic sales instance for lead gen and contact management from LinkedIn. So when you're in sales, you'll see a little bar pop up on the side. They'll show like things from LinkedIn. Um, there's also a Power BI LinkedIn Navigator analytics tool that allows you to integrate for your social actions and engagements in LinkedIn. Finally, this is one that's probably very common. If you're using dynamic sales or field service today, you may already be using this app, and it's a Dynamics 365 app for Outlook. This app integrates with Outlook to connect your inbox to Dynamics. You can link calendar entries, emails, contacts into Dynamics, and keep that 360 view of your customer and see them fresh and relevant for collaboration and history. So you get that back and forth between you know, your calendar and into Dynamics and vice versa. So you can use that. There's also, of course, you know, we've, we've mentioned uh, Viva Sales and some other things like that that also help uh, help with that. So moving into fundraising and engagement, I did talk about fundraising engagement app um, that you can bolt on, but also you can bolt on even uh, more things to keep enhancing and keep growing that for yourself. So there's a, an application called Donor Search. This is a lead generation or a prospecting application that allows you to gather prospective donors with philanthropic tendencies. Uh, it retrieves like 90 or more distinct data points in uh, to bring into a custom related entity to connect to your contact record. So, you know, when you look at Joe Smith, you can see his uh, philanthropic tendencies to find out, you know, do you want to try to draw him in for some donations or some philanthropic uh, endeavors or is it, are they great volunteers or things like that. So donor search uses 25 or more high quality data sources to build these prospecting analytics to help you with your fundraising and engagement. In addition to fun, uh, fundraising and engagement and donor search, you may want the ability to receive payments from your donors or fundraising events. So there's a couple of applications there. There's Stripe. Stripe is an integration that allows secure donations or payments to be collected and posted. And those that can be used with Dynamics BC or a Dynamics CE or reported into CE. And like Stripe, there's also Square. So a lot of times you'll have a couple different applications. It's just whichever one works best for you is, uh, is the best fit for you, which Boyer is happy to help you evaluate and say, you know, hey, we've had the best experience with this application versus that application. Okay, moving on, let's move into some document management. This next set of apps, these are, I'm sorry, I could talk for 30 minutes just on these apps alone. Um, if you're familiar with creating and maintaining templates and dynamics, okay, you've created that word template, you've uploaded it, and you're like, oh no, I've got to fix that. Okay, we got to upload, redo, it's very cumbersome using out of the box dynamics uh, templates. So if you have a lot of different templates or uh, for quoting and some for contracts and sales collateral and so on, I'd highly recommend Document Core Pack. This is a very robust tool. It integrates easily with Dynamics. It's super easy to configure and manage. 
and the templates have a lot more uh, flexibility and logic built into them. They're easy to download, re-upload, put them in, take them out. Um, there is also logic built into them uh, that allow you to like say, if this, then that, show this, don't show that. And instead of having 10 different templates, you could put them all in one if they're all coming from the same source. They can come from all different tables into one. Um, I just, I can't say enough great things about this. After the document is generated, it can be stored into SharePoint directly. Document Core Pack also integrates with DocuSign and it, or Adobe Acrobat, Acrobat Sign. It integrates with those. Out, you can just integrate that real easily. If you're not interested in Document Core Pack, you're like, I don't really do any of that, but I am certainly interested in getting those e-signatures. You can use DocuSign or Adobe Acrobat Sign uh, for electronic signatures. Uh, one thing I did fail to mention on Document Core Pack, see, I told you I could talk like forever about this, um, is with Document Core Pack, you also have what's called a uh, one-click action which uses power automate uh, where in one click you could have the document created sent ready for his e-signature and stored in sharepoint in just one click so like i said i could i could i could do a whole session just on document core pack uh, but anyway in it like i said e-signatures you have docusign adobe acrobat sign these are electronic signatures that many dynamics customers are using to capture electronic signatures from their clients on contracts or agreements using Dynamics data to integrate into their, into their document and Dynamics to reference the completed document. So I'd probably say I probably see DocuSign more than Adobe Acrobat Sign, but hey, they both work really well. Marketing, uh, there's a marketing session earlier. I'm just gonna talk a little bit more about some bolt-ons with marketing. Uh, there's Twilio, which actually Twilio now, last year Microsoft added out-of-the-box integration for Twilio inside marketing. So you don't necessarily have to get this app to use it with Microsoft marketing. But if you're not using, uh, I'm sorry, Dynamics marketing, if you're not using Dynamics marketing uh, and you need Twilio for other purposes, like just customer service, Twilio is a great application for that. Um, there's also um, InfoBip. I didn't put the uh, mention on here, but there is another one that's usually uh, Microsoft for reference to, which is uh, InfoBip. Uh, Twilio, back to Twilio, it allows you SMS, SMS and texting as well as WhatsApp. You can also do WhatsApp messages, which is great for marketing, sales, and customer service. So these interactions become part of a seamless customer experience. Again, you're working in dynamics. Uh, you just keep working right there. You don't have to keep going out to different places. Out of the box, dynamics doesn't really do as much of the, the, the texting, the social and all of that, but these applications help kind of bring more together. Text can be converted to leads, cases, contacts, opportunities. So like Twilio or InfoBit for SMS and texting, then you have Sprout and Hootsuite for social media. So you can engage with customer on social media like you did with texting. Those two applications allow you to uh, bring in, uh, generate um, different like uh, contacts, cases, leads, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, also interact out on those social platforms as well. There is inside of Dynamics Marketing, you can uh, post socially, uh, but the interaction is um, not quite up to par with some of these applications today. But like, uh, like Dave and Katie mentioned, it's, it's uh, advancing very quickly though. We already mentioned applications like LinkedIn and Donor Search earlier, but there's another app called Zoom Info. It's another lead and prospecting app for B2B prospecting. So you have just a lot of those things where you're trying to, you know, get out and grow your business, and there's a lot of applications to support that. And with marketing, we've already mentioned customer service. We've mentioned donor search, which is another form of marketing, um, you know, gathering marketing and leads and generation uh, and LinkedIn Navigator, which we mentioned earlier as well. So there's also um, moving on, I'm just going to make a brief mention on Power BI. Um, 
there will be a session tomorrow on Power BI with John Hill. So you don't want to, you want to be sure to attend that. He's going to go through some Power BI tomorrow, with some reports to show you. But there's also hundreds of Power BI visuals in App Source. Um, many app, and there's also Power BI apps. Um, and also just keep in mind, Power BI is very easily integrated into Microsoft 365 and Dynamics 365. Uh, so there's just a lot of things out there. Uh, one thing I didn't uh, mention in here is with all of these different apps, a lot of them, uh, they'll have a, you know free to try, uh, a trial or something like that. And then once you kind of, so you can try it out, decide is that what you want to use or not. Um, some of these things, I believe on some of the visuals, they might actually be free to totally use. You don't have to um, pay for them. But the app, when you get into the app and you visit those uh, app sites here, they'll tell you if there's actually a charge even after the trial or something like that. And as I mentioned, there is consulting services. So not only are there apps in Microsoft App Source, but you can find consulting services like the Boyer Foundation Plus program. Uh, or if there is something you know else that you need here, um, the other part, you know, a partner or something, which I mean, you want to, you want to only work with us here on Dynamics, but if there was something outside of Dynamics you needed some assistance with, um, there's other partner sources out there for that as well. So, whoo, we made it. So thank you for hanging out here. I hope you found something helpful and some ideas you, that you want to check out on Microsoft App Source. Um, are there any questions? Is there anything that I can answer for you? I know I ran through a whole lot of stuff and talked 90 miles a minute. They only gave me a few minutes because I can talk forever. <laughs> I think you did a great job, Kendra. It was very informative. Um, so looking at the questions, the Q&A section, it doesn't look like we have any questions at this time. So I'll give everybody a minute uh, to gather their questions and enter them into that Q&A section if you do have them. Um, otherwise, if you come up with any questions after the fact, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We can certainly answer those questions for you. But um, again, I really appreciate all of the information, Kendra. You do such a fabulous job. And um, thank you. And I hope that it was informative for all of our clients. Um, Please do feel free to check out any of our other sessions uh, that might interest you. And uh, we appreciate your time that you've spent with us. So uh, again, awesome. looking back, it doesn't look like we have any questions at this time. So I guess I will go ahead and wrap up this session. And uh, yeah. I hope that everybody has a great rest of their day. Make sure you come back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about Power Platform tomorrow. Let's go. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much.